manuscript is titled Epidural Spinal Cord Stimulation or Recovery from Spinal Cord Injury, Its Place in Therapy, and this is co-authored with one of my neurosurgical resident, Dr. Michael Safi. I've been using neuromodulation therapies for over two decades and have completed over 4,000 surgeries in both Canada and the U.S., and so I'm quite familiar with both socialized as well as people service based medicine delivered in academic institutions. This manuscript is a review of some of the current research focused on using existing epidural spinal cord stimulation technologies in establishing the effectiveness in the recovery of independent standing, ambulation, or intentional movement of spinal cord injury patients. Although encouraging, the preliminary literature has not identified the ideal candidate, the mechanism of action or long-term efficacy of, of using current spinal cord stimulation technology for this application. It is extremely labor-intensive and requires significant clinical resources that are beyond those of most clinical settings, actually, right now. Although the results have been intriguing, considerable work still needs to be undertaken to understand the mechanism of action, appropriate candidacy, and long-term benefits. I would strongly advocate more research and the establishment of an algorithm of treatment based on these findings. Utilizing existing neuromodulation therapies to evoke motor function was not the intended use of spinal cord stimulation. Therefore, once we have better understanding of the mechanism of action, we could encourage industry to develop technologies more directly beneficial to the intended outcomes. I encourage researchers to continue to pursue this type of restorative treatment model. Ultimately, the goal of establishing neural pathways to induce willful and controlled motor function in spinal cord injured patient is a very desirable outcome. But secondarily to this, the autonomic function of the bladder of sexual and thermal regulation activities improvements were perceived to be significant benefit to the patient. Ultimately, our goal as clinicians and researchers is to improve the quality of life of our patient, not only to our satisfaction, but also to the satisfaction of our patients. Therefore, secondary benefits inadvertently gained through these therapies and perceived to be significant to the patient need to be carefully considered in establishing the overall success for these treatment modalities.